Welcome back, everybody, to a, another special episode of Tier Tuesdays as we get ready for the 2024 NFL Draft. And as you can see, I have my good friend, co-host, and uh, if you guys haven't watched any of the Mock, Mock Draft Mondays, the leader of our Mock Draft Mondays, uh, DJ, known as the brain. I don't know what they're doing if they haven't watched Mock Draft Mondays. Where's the flag at when we need it, right? Uh, it. But yeah, DJ's joining me again for Tier Tuesdays, DJ, as we are talking receivers today. Can't wait. It's the deepest position in the draft almost by far. Probably one of the deepest posi- deepest receiver drafts in a long time. If we made a top 50 list, there's probably 16 people on 16 receivers on that list alone. Maybe there's one coming up. We'll have to wait and see. But you see anywhere from five to I wouldn't be surprised if we saw eight go in the first round. It's a very gr- deep group of receivers. Yeah, I'm glad you started with that because we don't have all of those on this. We're not going first round. We're not going for- by ranking. We're going by how we feel this player will shake out. Uh, going into the draft and how they do have a career. Um, you know, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, we have, I believe it is seven players on this list today. So without further ado, DJ, we're just going to jump right into it. I'll explain it. And then you go over what you think we need to fix. <laughs> All right. So we have our categories here. If you guys haven't seen them, can't see them up on the screen. It is first wide receiver taken. Uh, and then we have high quality wide receiver. Good. Maybe great. Underrated. And Kelvin Benjamin. Uh, before we get to the Kelvin Benjamin category, I will explain that a little bit later. Uh, but I'm going to start with the easy one first. I'm going to go first wide receiver taken. Obviously, that's Marvin Harrison Jr. I think at this point in time, if it's anybody else, where's the challenge flag at again, DJ? Because we need the challenge flag. Oh, hold on. It's over here. I got a big dude. There we go. Challenge flag. <laughs> Red flag on the floor. <laughs> really, at this point in time, it's Marvin Harrison Jr. or bust as the first receiver. If it's not, it's probably a situation um, which, if you stay tuned for our special episode tomorrow, You'll see what my thoughts are on maybe a reason why Marvin Harrison Jr. might not be the first wide receiver taken, but I'm not going to spoil that just yet. You'll have to check that out on our episode tomorrow. Um, but yeah, so that's my my first wide receiver taken here. I just think he should be the first wide receiver taken. He's probably the most NFL ready. We saw him get 12 touches last year in a game, and I still felt like he should have had 22. You know, that's just who he, how good he is. Moving down, we're going to go high-quality wide receivers. Uh, in this category, I'm going to have three players. I have Roma Dunze. I have Malik Neighbors, and I have his teammate, Brian Thomas Jr., which most people might look at this and be like, why is Brian Thomas Jr. up there? If you know, you know. Brian Thomas Jr. might be one of the most polished receivers not named Marvin Harrison Jr. in this class. I think he's going to make somebody really happy. And I'm not saying that like the Terrace Marshall type really happy. I mean like Justin Jefferson levels of happy. Maybe not that extreme in his rookie year, but he's going to make somebody very happy. Malik Neighbors is up here because, well, there's no question how good of a talent he is. And anybody who watched football last year, college football, you know what Roma Roma Dunze can do. That big body can fly by anybody and run some of the best routes you'll see. And his hands, his hands are impressive. Um, So we're going to move down to good, maybe great. In this category, I have A.D. Mitchell. I think he's good. He might be great, really. Uh, That speed is something that has (laughs) – that speed is incredible. Um, And his ability to run routes, catch the ball is – maybe his only issue is consistently catching the ball, uh, but he will – Give you every route out there. He will give you every run by on anybody. No, nobody, good luck keeping up with this guy. Um, so A.D. Mitchell's up here. And then I also have Troy Franklin, which some people might be questioning because if you've heard my com- complaints about Troy Franklin, Franklin throughout the draft process, I do have questions. There are some questions with Troy Franklin, which is why this is a good, maybe great category, not a third best receiver set in the cat- You know, in the draft. This is a I'm leaving a little room here. They're going to start out good. They're going to have a good base level. As a rookie, I don't know if they're going to be great, but I do think if he has the potential to work at his trade, to apply it, apply it around the NFL, get a good quality team, depending on his, where he goes, he could be a, become a great receiver. may not be a long-term greatness, but it may be greatness for one, two, three years. So um, that's why I have Troy Franklin here. So that's A.D. Mitchell and Troy Franklin in the good, maybe great category. And then underrated, this guy I think is he, – he definitely raised some eyebrows uh, during the combine. Um, if you guys don't know who I'm talking about, that's Lad McConkey out of Georgia. Um, if you didn't watch what he did in the combine, what he did in the senior bowl, what he did down the stretch for Georgia, uh, it's it's an impressive impressive thing he's done. His entire stat line is underratedly good um, at Georgia. He was always kind of that number two guy at Georgia, never really getting that opportunity to be number one because they either had Brock Bowers or you had another first round pick uh, before him and George Pickens. Like T- Lad McConkie was there throughout it out throughout it all, and he was just as good throughout it all. So I think this guy is going to make a lot of teams happy, but I don't know if he goes in the first round. Maybe slides to the second because white guy receivers in the NFL don't necessarily go in the first round always. We'll see if that but that that trend continues. 
And then, as always, I always provide one of these fun categories. Uh, Kelvin Benjamin. If you guys know anything about Kelvin Benjamin, coming out of college, coming off the national championship uh, winning Florida State at the time, great big body receiver, paired up with Cam Newton. They had a great relationship. It was all good. And then he got mad that Cam wasn't throwing him the ball enough. He was throwing the ball to Steve Smith, throwing the ball to Greg Olson. He got mad. And then he got traded. And then he never really caught on anywhere, ended up a tight end, ate too many cheeseburgers, and is now out of the league. Um, I don't think it's going to go this level with this gentleman in, in this category, but Keon Coleman has the biggest bust potential for me out of this draft. And ironically, he is, just happens to be a big body receiver out of a Florida state team where if he's not careful, could get slid down in that tight end role. And obviously maybe I'm just kidding. Maybe I'm not, we don't know, but that's why I have Keon Coleman here with Kelvin Benjamin. Cause he does have talent. It's just, can he stay focused enough to play long-term as a wide receiver in the NFL. So DJ, what's your thought? We'll start at the top because it's obvious. Marvin Anderson Jr., number one receiver, my opinion, the best player in the draft altogether. If he would would have came out last year, he'd have been receiver number one. Pretty much most years he's in that category. He's 6'4", 210, smooth route runner, probably runs like low 4'4s, 4'3s, absolutely ridiculous. Nothing he can't really do. Best player in the draft, best receiver, definitely. High-quality receiver, this is an interesting one because – there are a lot of teams that have Malik Neighbors as receiver number one from what the rumors are. They actually like him more. I don't know about that person. I like Malik Neighbors a lot. I think him, Roma Dunes, and Brian Thomas Jr. are all absolutely awesome. I actually think Brian Thomas Jr. is underrated. I think if you look at him in other years, oh, he's receiver okay. one last year. I'm not saying you move him up. I think he has to stay here. Like this, The categories we have, they all make sense there. But I think people overlook how good Brian Thomas Jr. really is. He's 6'4 and 205 and ran a 4'3'3". Like he's got a lot of Julio Jones to him when you watch him play. He's just more end zone, a little bit less yards. I mean, he found the end zone 17 times last year. He's absolutely ridiculous. He plays on the outside. He's a true X type of receiver that could explode. He's incredible. I think Brian Thomas Jr., I think he's going to surprise a lot of people when he comes to the league. I think he's going to be in the teens, and they're going to be like, oh, he's like that. I think he's someone, if Arizona wants to trade back and they're going to get a receiver anyway, that's somebody, same with, the Chargers, those teams in the first, those top 10 picks that are like, we want Marvin Adunze neighbors, but Brian Thomas, the gap between those three and Thomas Jr. is not as big as people think it is. Roma Dunze, huge fan. I actually have him as receiver two, slightly ahead of neighbors. I love his, the big body, the ability to attack the ball. DeAndre Hopkins esque. Malik neighbors, he has like four rockets right up his ass and he will fly all over the field. He's absolutely, he's absolutely awesome. <laughs> I think he'll do his best work on a team where he could play as an explosive slot guy. I'm going to compare him to CD Lamb, honestly. Receiver, they can obviously play outside. We're not saying they're not a number one when they play there, but CD Lamb in the slot puts everybody in hell. That's why he was the leading receiver last year. I think neighbors could do a lot of the same things. He's they're all awesome. All four of these guys, any of them would be a receiver number one last year if they came out last year in the draft. Arguably, even the year before when you had Olave, Garrett Wilson, Drake London, that's a really good group of guys. These guys, I think, would be in that same category with Jamison Williams. I think these guys would all be in contention for that receiver one as well. It's a very good group at the top. Good, maybe great. I love A.D. Mitchell in this spot. I think he has so – we talked about it before too. He's scored five touchdowns in the college football playoff in his career. You mentioned Lad McConkey and the guys he had to play with. He had to play with A.D. Mitchell for a year. A.D. Mitchell is that awesome. The only question is there's a lot of plays in between where it's like you see him like walking mm-hmm. on the play. Like there's a lot of – where there's smoke, there's fire. I don't take too much for it. It is rumor season too. It is nitpick season. If he's on his game, he's awesome. I think there is no doubt about that too. He is there. He is part of the reason Texas was so damn good this year. And I think those, he's going to be a surprise in the back end of the, there too. Troy Franklin, I'm a little less high on. I think good is kind of where he's going to stay at. I think depend. He's one. It depends where he goes. So he could be a very. Good, I think you see him as a very good explosive number two receiver. Might even lead the team in receiving a year or two. I think he'll just need a compliment option, but he's. A burner at six foot two, he's very, very good. Him and Bo Nix had a nice report. I think he'll find a nice niche. If you find, I think in round two, he's a very, very good value. Maybe Carolina with two of their two seconds, they need receiver help. Maybe they grab him and Mr. Underrated himself, Lad McConkey, who I think a lot of people think he's Wes Welker and Ju- or Julian Edelman. But then when you look at his numbers, he's actually Chris Olave with just a lot brighter skin tone. He ran a four to three nine, smooth in and out of breaks, very good hands. I think he's a very, very good. He's going to be a very, very good receiver in a very pass-heavy system. I think even Cincinnati, he's a great fit, too, opposite Jamar Chase. Mm-hmm. He could run a lot of those underneath routes because that's what he does so good on film. 
but he has the ability to, to break away too. And then Kelvin Benjamin, I don't want to say that he's Kelvin Benjamin for the same reasons it, 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 when you put him next to each other coming out though, it's a very uncomfortable comparison. I do think Keon Coleman has a lot of talent and he could, he could be like, bam, he could be T Higgins. There's a very good chance that my concern is he doesn't separate as well. We don't see him running away from people or separating with his routes as much at Florida state. We see him basically dunking on people nonstop. We see him getting a little bit of space over the middle and incredible contestes, contested catches, which you could say the same a little bit about a Dunze too. I think a Dunze is a little smoother. His route running gets him a little more space, but Keon Coleman, I really, I think in that day too, I think he could be a very good similar type of role like we expected, but so far I'm not going to change anyone here. I just wanted to highlight a few of those things I want to highlight. I think Brian Thomas Jr. People see him as like, oh, he's received after those top three. It could be anyone. I feel like Brian Thomas Jr. is a solid receiver for like he, I would say he gets his own category here, but we've been sticking with five categories throughout tier Tuesday and we're going to stick with it here. But I think he almost gets his own category. It's like, all right, there's those clear elite three, a smaller gap, Brian Thomas Jr., then a similar size gap before you get to like him, A.D. Mitchell, and some of those. I think he's just really, really good. He might he might be a better NFL receiver than Neighbors and a Dunze, potentially, depending on where they go. Fits, we know how it is when they translate to it. Depends where they go as much as who they are sometimes. But I think he is very, very good. Just wanted to highlight Brian Thomas. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I think I'm right there with you on all these. Obviously, these are our picks here where we have them. Let's know your guys' thoughts in the comments here. If you guys don't know yet, it is draft week. Uh, important note that it is DJ and I first time uh, hosting the Belly Up Sports NFL Draft Special. This is our third draft special uh, in our third, fourth, third? I don't even remember anymore. Third. This is our third. First one for Belly Up. We're going to be the ones driving the ship, if you will. Uh, it is in Detroit, so maybe driving the Corvette, maybe. Um, we'll see. Anyways, I don't know if they'll give us a Corvette. They definitely won't let us on the on the Ford Field uh, property to do it, unfortunately, which is sad. I tried to ask. They didn't let us do that. Uh, but that'll be Thursday, guys, 8 p.m. Eastern time. And if you guys don't know and you haven't seen any of the videos yet, be sure to check this little snippet out real quick. Join us live Thursday, 425 at 8 p.m. Eastern time for the Belly Up Sports Draft Special. We'll be getting live reactions and analysis from personalities all across the Belly Up Sports Network. You'll see special guests Zach Kyleman and Josh Mahler. Jared from the Corner Booth Pod will give you live analysis, while DJ and Kelsey drive you through the entirety of the first round of the NFL Draft. Be sure to join us live Thursday, 425 at 8 p.m. Eastern time right here on Belly Up Sports. There you have it, guys. Be sure to tune in Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern time, as DJ and I will take you through the draft. As you heard, a lot of fun friends joining the show, uh, new and old. Um, so we're going to bring Zach in. We're going to bring Josh Mahler back in. We're going to bring all of our good friends from the Belly Up Sports Network. And who knows what videos might pop up during the show. And, you know, also we're going to give away some beef jerky. Um, just if you guys haven't seen those posts yet, go over to the Belly Up Sports social media pages. And there is an over-under betting option uh it's not really a bet it's a guess whichever one you choose it is based off quarterbacks picked in the first round we have set the number for how many quarterbacks we believe are going to be picked in the first round if it's a push we're just going to take all the names and put them in a hat and pull them out if it goes over all the people who said over get put in a hat and we're pulling a name out all the people that say under get put in a hat and you're pulling the name out so there it is guys we're going to be sure to check it out. Be sure to get yourself entered for some free beef jerky from our good friends over at Righteous Felon Jerky. And I can't wait, DJ. How about you? It's one of my favorite times of the year, and I'm definitely looking forward to this. You all definitely want to tune into that. And you know what? Maybe win some jerky or some treats for your dog, as they do have dog treats there in Canada. The dogs do enjoy them a ton. Yeah, absolutely. So, guys, be sure to check that out on Thursday, 425. So this Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Be sure to check that out. And we will see you again for more Tier Tuesdays later this week as well. DJ, I'm sure you're going to join me for one more. We got one more in here. We got a very good position group here with the defensive backs, and I think it'll be a good time. Absolutely. We'll be right. We'll see you later on this week for more getting ready for